Good morning. It's good to be with you on this Tuesday morning as we continue together in our time in Malachi. Today we're in Malachi chapter three. Um, we're like as we've been saying, we're getting we're getting closer to the end of the uh, of the uh, Old Testament. So we're going to be in Malachi three today, verses one through uh, one through seven. Malachi three one through seven. See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. The Lord whom you will seek, will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And though they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment, I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers and their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. Ever since the days your ancestors have turned aside from my statutes and not, have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? So we um we see a judgment here, and this is this is interesting because it talks about the uh, coming messenger. He said, "I will send my messenger ahead of you," um, and we actually see who this messenger is, and we actually this ties into the New Testament, ties into Jesus. Called Malachi. We're going to skip ahead for just a second. Malachi chapter four verse five says, "Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes." So we see here that Elijah will be the will be the one who will come to prepare the way, the messenger to prepare the way before me. And of course, when we go and read the Gospels, we see that that Elijah that's referenced here, that's John the Baptist. So this is a reference, this is a biblical prophecy or biblical foundation pointing us to John the Baptist as the messenger of the Lord, the one who will come before the judgment, the one who will come to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Of course, the Lord that the messenger is preparing the way for is Jesus. So the Lord sent John the Baptist to be the Elijah, to one, the prophet who would come and prepare the way or make the path straight for the coming of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ. So we see the messenger coming, the messenger who is John the Baptist. Um, he is the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming. But who can endure his covenant coming? Because who can stand when he appears? And of course, if you read John the Baptist, you see that John... Um, John was a revival preacher. You know, I joke that I, I like to preach revivals. In fact, I'll be preaching a revival next week back home in the Macomb area uh, at Adams United Methodist Church. And so if you're around, if you're around Lincoln or Pike County, I'd love to see you. Um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night uh, at Adams United Methodist Church as I come and preach revival there. But I'll say I like preaching revivals because as a revival preacher, you can come and stir up a mess and then go home. You know, I can come, say what I want to say, preach what I want to, what I want to preach, and then leave. I don't have to pastor. <laughs> I'll leave it to Jonathan down on Adams to pastor the people. I'll just come and stir up a mess, and then I'll leave it for him to clean up. But when you're revival, you have that prophetic element to it. You, you're coming to speak. You know, I, I'm not really going to Adams next week to pastor. I'm not. I'm going to proclaim the word of the Lord. And of course, as a preacher, as a pastor, you do that every Sunday as well. But I know that, um, I, I guess the, the difference from a pastor's perspective is this. Um, to, I have not just the call and duty here at St. Matthew's to proclaim the word of God on Sundays, but also have the duty to pastor. I mean, the highest... I mean, the highest privilege I have here is getting to pastor and shepherd my people, getting to hold the hand of those who are weary, getting to pray for those who are sick, getting to visit the hospitals. I mean, I was fortunate, to, you know, yesterday to go and visit the hospitals. It's, it's an honor. The prophet comes in and they break out the whooping stick. <laughs> they, they break out the whooping stick. For he's like a refiner's fire, like a fuller soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the descendants of David and refine them like gold and silver till they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. And then Jerusalem and Judea will be pleasing to the Lord. Um, and, you know, here's the thing that it is. We all need somebody in our life to call us out, don't we? 
somebody who will speak that hard truth that we don't always want to hear, but that we need to hear. We all need the prophets in our lives. One of my mentors quoted a great preacher, and he said, the job of the preacher is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Sometimes we all need someone to afflict us, don't we? Because if we do get too comfortable, too complacent, then we're never going to push ourselves to grow. We need that. We all need to be pushed. We all need to be giving a little, a little a loving nudge every once in a while to grow deeper. I know that I do. I know I need those who um will will um give me that 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 nudge and push. So um but I, I, I like what it says in verse six. Well verse five talks of the judgment they have not um, they, I will bear witness against the sorcerers, and the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, those who oppress the hired worker, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me. So we fear the Lord. We should. Every lie, every part of our life should be in be guarded by the integrity of the Lord. God's integrity and God's fear should reach into every part of our life, our business dealings. Our conversations and and our our actions with others. It isn't just how we had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. I don't know how much of that uh, dropped off. My my camera dropped for a second there. So what I was what I was what I was saying is that uh, the integrity of the Lord. It, it it isn't just in how we act on Sunday. It isn't just our Sunday actions or our Sunday living, but. Honestly, it's how we act every day of our life. Our fear of the Lord, the integrity of the Lord, it should affect every interaction we have and how we do business, how we how we uh, treat each other. It, the fear of the Lord should do that. And then I, I like the last few verses. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Lord of hosts. I love that concept. Return to me, and I will return to you. That's That's a powerful concept, y'all. That's big. Um, the Lord, the Lord is always there. Sometimes we feel like we've gone too far, don't we? I don't know if you I don't know if you ever felt that way where you think I've, I've done too much. Surely the Lord won't forgive me. Surely the Lord won't restore me. Surely I've done too much. The Lord says, I, I love what it says, verse 6, I don't change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. The Lord is merciful. He is kind. And the same Lord who showed grace upon grace upon grace to the children of Israel. The same God who forget, forgave their iniquities who restored them when they fell. The same God who, when they deserve to be cast aside, showed them grace. Return to me and I will return to you. God's always there, y'all. He's always there. He's always just one step away. He's always just one ask. One ask of forgiveness. One ask of mercy, one ask of grace. The Lord's always there, y'all. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask forgiveness. All we have to do is ask for mercy. All we have to do is ask for grace. He's there, y'all. He longs to return. Return to me. And I'll, I love what Jesus says. Oh, take my yoke upon you for my burden is easy. I'm kind and gentle of the spirit. You've not gone too far, friends. You've got you've not gone too far. He is there. He is right there, waiting when we return. That's all we have to do. So today, no. Um, Lord, you're waiting on us. All we have to do is return back. So good stuff, Malachi today. Thanks for being with us. Uh we'll pick up tomorrow with uh verse eight of chapter three. Have a great day.